Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. If you've never been here before, then I welcome you. My name is Jamie and I do reviews on some of the bags that I own. I also some unboxings on new items into my collection. If you've already been to my channel, then I welcome you back. What I'm gonna be sharing with you today are four of my top handle bags. Top handles are my favorite style of bags, so I have quite a few, but I brought out the four that are designer ones and in the same size category. I've also put them, I believe, in order of price from the lowest priced to the highest priced or highest to the lowest, whichever direction you go in. Um, so highest priced is the Chanel Kelly bag in the black caviar leather. Second is the Louis Vuitton Croissette in the Damier Aben. The third would be the YSL Collège in the size medium. And then the Michael Kors Ava, which is at the lowest price point and it's in the size small. Uh, I do own a lot of top handles. It's my favorite type because you can wear it in multiple ways. You can use the attached straps to wear it on the shoulder, wear it crossbody. You can also um, wear it in the crook of your arm or very ladylike, of course, just to hand hold it. So lots of variety and ways to wear a top handle bag. They give you the most variety, I believe, of any bag on the market. And when I'm looking for my top handle bags, I look for about five different things. So I'm going to tell you how these four bags rank within those five categories of things that I look for. Um, so the first thing that I look for is the weight of the bag, how heavy it's going to be. And I will just tell you right away that the lightest bag of all of them is in fact the Louis Vuitton Croissette, but that's because it's made out of canvas. Um, it's the only bag here that is in a non-leather material. Obviously leather is going to weigh the most and the absolute most will be Chanel's caviar leather. That's a very heavy type of leather. Um, the lambskin is a bit lighter. So going in order of weight, the lightest is the Louis Vuitton Croissette of the canvas. Um, and then between the leather ones, I would say that the next lightest would be the YSL Collège, followed by the Michael Kors Ava in Safiano. And then the heaviest bag is the caviar leather. So when you're carrying a top handle bag, if weight is a consideration, you definitely want to look at canvas first, followed by one of the lighter leathers, which would be like a lambskin or a sheepskin or a goatskin. Caviar would be the worst choice for weight because it's a very heavy type of grained leather. So the next thing that I look at is whether or not the item has feet on the bottom. This is the Chanel Kelly bag. I know some of their more recent bags do have feet on the bottom, like the Coco handle. This particular model does not. So that's a consideration is whether or not these bags have feet and can protect it when you set it down. And you can see that all of these designer bags, and these are the top three designers, Chanel, Louis Vuitton, and YSL, none of them offer you feet on the bottom. And yet the lowest price point, Michael Kors, does have four feet on the bottom. So strangely enough, nobody in the designer category has put feet on their bags, but someone in a very low price point category has. Um, and that's definitely a consideration because you will be at times having to set that bag down. Um, you know, whether it's at work, if you're traveling with it, just in a restaurant, there's times when you have to put it, you know, on the floor beside you or somewhere on a surface that isn't clean. Another thing I look for is the handle, what kind of handle it has, whether it's a completely stationary handle. Uh, stationary handles tend to bump into the side of your body when you're wearing them and you open up the flap of the bag. So in this case, the Chanel Kelly bag has a stationary handle, no movement whatsoever. Same thing with the Croissette, it's very, very minimal movement. So whenever I open the bags, these hit my body um, on the side because there's no give to these handles at all. Let me move them out of the way. Um, these two over here, the YSL Collège and the Michael Kors, both have significant movement to their handles. I would say the winner in this particular category is for sure the YSL because it comes completely forward and also completely back, meaning that it's never going to be hitting your body when you open the flap. The Michael Kors has a, quite, a, quite a good give to it. It has more backward and forward I'm sorry, it has more side to side than backward forward, um, but it does help that there's some relief so that when you're opening the flap, it's not completely going to hit the side of your body. That's actually quite an important consideration because it also determines how far open you can get that flap to open up. Will you be able to see all of the contents of your bags or just a little bit of the contents? All of them come with an, a, a strap um, with the exception of the Kelly. I purchased, 
I can move these three out of the way. Um, I purchased for the Kelly my own additional straps. It doesn't come with them. I purchased a leather strap to go with it, and I also, because I love iridescence, I purchased a iridescent strap to attach. Um, so both of those are adjustable and made to fit me, so by default it does come with a strap that's adjustable. Um, but that's something to look for. What kind of strap does it come with? The croissette comes with a non-adjustable strap. So if you are on the shorter and or taller side, that might be a consideration because this Damier Aben strap has no holes in it. It's a what you see is what you get strap. So you either have to live with the length that you've been given or swap it out for a strap of your choice and therefore it might not uh, perfectly match the bag. So that's a consideration. What kind of strap does it come with? Is it going to be adjustable for you and or stationary? I forget what the YSL Collège comes with. Let's open her up and take a look. Also a non-adjustable strap. Um, and it's a chain strap, meaning that it could potentially be heavier on your shoulder. So that's something you wanna think about. Um, the Michael Kors strap is completely adjustable. And then the last thing you wanna look at, of course, is the size of the bag. Um, all of these right here, you can kind of see, are in the same category. They're in a small category. They're not medium-sized bags, they're all small. This one has expandability because of the button snap right there. You can unsnap this, Let's see if I can do it one-handed, and that allows you to get more space in the interior compartment. It has a dual compartment, so your inner compartment here is sectioned into two different sections and then also a zipper in the center. It opens fully wide back there. The croissette and the Chanel just have one interior compartment with no expandability. So that's something to consider as well, is whether or not that's gonna be okay with you having just one interior compartment with no um, expandability, um, or whether you would want a bag that has like sectioned compartments or an expandable, uh, the ability to expand because of the snap button. So those are some of the five things that I look for. Um, if I had to rank these bags from my my most used bag is this one right here, the Michael Kors. Second would be the YSL Collège. Third would be the Croissette. And the fourth would be the um, Chanel Kelly. So I guess that's how I would rank them as well. I think the best one for your money, though, overall, would be the Michael Kors. Even though it's on the lowest end and it's not one of the top tier designers, it offers the most value for your money. It's an all-weather bag. It has the adjustable strap. It has the feet on the bottom. It has the button here for expandability. So hands down, I would recommend actually the lowest price point bag as the best value for your money. It's held up remarkably well. I've had it the longest out of all of these and I would repurchase it again and again and again. It is a remarkable bag for the money. I absolutely would recommend it over any of these three designer bags. Um, there's no reason to buy the designer bags if you could get your hands on this one. It serves the same function as the other three and at a better price point with better um, functionality. And it has the back pocket as well, which is missing off of the croissant. Um, so definitely hands down, this would be my number one. If you have any questions about any of these bags, please don't hesitate to ask. They all have full reviews, which I will link for you below. I appreciate you watching and taking the time. Thank you so much and have a good day. Bye-bye.